We're celebrating the feast, or not actually, it's not a feast, but we're celebrating the sixth Sunday of Easter. So the Ascension is coming, and um, massively celebrated for the repose of the souls of Tom and Franz Sock. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, so that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This was the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, 
to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia, Cilicia, of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our neighbor, number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, o God let, let all the, the nations, nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, God, let all nations, nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. O oh God, God, let, let all, all the nations, nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, 
The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading, we heard about one of the early controversies that the church faced, um, and it had to do with converts, um, converts to Christianity, converts who weren't Jewish, but were converts from the Greek world, you know, the, and the, the pagan religions that the Greeks had. So anyway, uh, if you read through that story, you can kind of guess how it's going to end up, even at the very beginning. See, what happens is the um, early Christian community in Jerusalem hears that there are all these converts up in Antioch. And so they send representatives to that new group of Christians and they say, okay, you need to follow Jewish custom. You need to be circumcised. You need to follow Jewish dietary laws. You need to do all these things if you're going to be part of this new faith. And when I said, you can kind of see how the story is going to end up, what I'm talking about is the idea that when they went up there and said, be circumcised and make sure that you follow Jewish dietary laws, you could ask the question, those rules and regulations they laid down, where was Jesus in all of that? They didn't say anything about make sure you follow the Lord's dictate in this matter and make sure you follow Jesus' example in that matter. No, it was about really being Jewish. And so anyway, as we all know, they had a council in Jerusalem and they decided that those new converts didn't need to become Jewish. The fact that they were placing their faith in Jesus, the fact that they were going to do their best to follow the, his example, the fact that they were going to tell the story of Christ, that was good enough. That's what made them Christian. And so anyway, it's good for us to think about that because a good question to ask always is, where is Christ in all this? And it's a question we still need to ask today. For instance, oh, maybe 24 years ago or so, I was stationed in Meadville, Pennsylvania. And in Meadville, there were three Catholic churches in town. There was St. Bridget's, St. Agatha's, and St. Mary's. Now, St. Bridget's had been the Irish parish. St. Agatha was the German parish. And that's where I was assigned. And St. Mary's was the Italian parish. And um, as time went on, those three communities didn't always see eye to eye, but it actually got a little worse because St. Bridget's became the liberal parish and St. Agatha's became the very conservative parish and St. Mary's was still the Italian parish. But um, the, the uh, divides deepened, so much so that one night I was called to the hospital. You know, it was like two in the morning, something like that. I was called to see a lady and anoint her. And so I walked into her room and she looked at me and said, you're not from St. Bridget's. And I said, no, uh, I'm from St. Agatha's, Father Allen. And I, uh, I guess they couldn't find anybody or couldn't reach anybody at St. Bridget's because their pastor was a little on the deaf side. And um, so they called me and so I'm here to anoint you. And she said, I'll wait for my priest. And I said, are you sure? Because... You know, some, normally when they call a priest at two in the morning to anoint somebody, that means death could be imminent. But she wanted to wait for her priest. And so I kept asking her, are you sure? And she kept saying, yep, I'm sure. And, uh, so she refused the sacrament. And I always think back to that moment when I'm thinking about questions like this. Where's Jesus in all this? You know, her membership of her particular parish was more important than the brotherhood 
that we all share in Christ. You know, we are part of his flock. We're not just parts of individual parishes. And the fact that we're a part of his flock is supposed to be so much more important than which particular parish we belong to. But sometimes people forget that. And so it's so what we do need to do in situations like that, when we're the one laying in bed, is ask, well, where is Jesus Christ in my reaction? And um, it's not only moments that are close to death, but there are moments every day when we react to some uncomfortable or difficult situation or some frustrating situation. We need to look at our own behavior and say, was Christ present in the way I responded? When we're making decisions, we need to ask ourselves those questions like, what would Jesus do? Which isn't always pertinent, but we need to ask ourselves, am I trying to act or respond or answer in a Christian fashion? Those are the sorts of good guideposts we want to set up as we go through our life day after day. We want to make sure that whatever it is we're teaching, whatever it is we're working towards, whatever it is we are feeling and whatever and however it is we're acting, that our membership in this community of faith, our identity as Christians is really going to be a part of, and really the most important part of our thought process. How are we going to respond? How are we going to act? How are we going to treat the people near us? How are we going to respond in disappointing moments? How are we going to restrain ourselves when we're angry? The question is, where's Jesus in the way I'm living right now? And that's the question we need to keep asking. It's a question some of those early Christians forgot when they ran up to Damascus, or not Damascus, Antioch, but it's a question that we need to continually ask. In the way I'm acting, in the way I'm living, where is Jesus Christ? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he'll be blessed with the guidance of the Holy Spirit as he leads and guides our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and all our political leaders, that they will govern us with wisdom and integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for each of us, that we may remain strong in our faith and that we may be persistent in our efforts to share the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for peace in our troubled world, especially in uh, Ukraine, um, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Tom and Fran Sock, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, that they may rest in the peace and joy of God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Help us always and everywhere to remember that we are members of 
your son's flock. Help us to do our best in whatever situation we face to be faithful imitators of Jesus Christ. We ask these and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Tom and Fran Sock, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please recite with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. As always, it's good to have you here with us. There are two or three reminders today. Uh, first of all, if you're living in the Sharon area and you are itching to come to Mass today, uh, there will be confirmation at Notre Dame at 2 o'clock this afternoon. The bishop will be here. The church won't be overly crowded because it is an addition, a Mass that's in addition to our normal Mass schedule. So if you would like to come and sit far away from others uh, to remain safe from the virus, this would be a good opportunity. Plus, it's always nice to see a confirmation and be part of it. Secondly, uh, don't forget that uh, Thursday is uh, the Feast of the Ascension, which is a holy day of obligation around here. Um, I'll have a whole host of Masses. One on Wednesday night, I believe, at St. Bart's, and then early, uh, like 7 a.m., Thursday morning at St. Bart's, 9 o'clock here. That'll be a school Mass. It'll be a little more crowded than some of the others. Uh, 1210 over at St. Bart's, 2 o'clock at Kennedy, but don't come to that because they won't let you in. And then uh, in the evening here at Notre Dame. I don't remember the exact time, but feel free to call the church if you'd like to come to one of those. As you can see, there's a million of masses, so again, uh, you should be able to do some good social distancing. And then finally, uh, yesterday happened to be Ginger's birthday, our favorite dog, and so she was 10. You don't need to send presents, but anyway, uh, she's a good dog and everybody loves her, so uh, it's just good to wish her a happy birthday in the silence of your heart. So anyway, thank you for being here, and um, we'll see you next Sunday.